There we go, we are back, we are almost live, we'll be live in just a moment folks. Boy oh boy what a day it's been, it's been a long one. But finally some good news at the end of what has been a horrendous tunnel. More about that in a moment. And lots more woo on the way and a big shout out to the Netherlands. Wow, all the way from Holland today, get in there. very quiet in here today but maybe that's just the way I need it. I want to welcome everyone back to the stream. We've got Jocelyn first in the chat room. Alaska checking in first. We've got nothing as it seems. And in third, 
A new name on me, Thin Hope 16, all the way from Rotterdam in the Netherlands. And I spent a quality two or three months in the Netherlands just after getting out of the army. Wow. Can I remember much of it? Not much. Not much. Just the parts that probably remember. I've blacked out all the bad parts. And, well, I tell you what, what a time I had over there. Went for a weekend. Stayed for a couple of months. It's one of those places, folks. When you've got an addictive personality like me, it's hard to peel me away from the delights that the Netherlands has to offer. And not only that, they've got brilliant people over there. And not only that, they've got a brilliant football team as well. So, big shout out to the Netherlands. Good to see you here today. Thin Hope. We've got ZX coming in now. And for those of you who have been keeping up with the the times and the turmoils that I go through in my personal life, I want to tell everyone we've got some good news on my mum's health. My brother phoned me about 10-15 minutes ago, which had me falling off the chair. The last thing I wanted today was a phone call from a family member. It's what I've been telling myself all day. If the phone goes... Probably not good, right? But Kenny was just phoning me, and a big shout out to Kenny. I hope you're watching us right now, bro. Um, he had phoned me because he knows that I've been worrying for probably him. I've been worrying for the whole of Scotland. The amount of anxiety I've been going through in the past couple of days, it, it, it's ludicrous. But she has come out of the operation. Not sure if she had the bypass yet, but everything so far, so good. Touch wood, God willing. And I want to thank all of you out there for your prayers, for your energy, for your vibes, whatever it is you've been sending my mum's way. I think it's contributed a long way to pulling her out the other side of what I had been really, really worried about. In fact, it's probably been affecting what we've been doing here on the streams and the shows for a number of weeks now, as much as I don't want to admit it. It has been at the forefront of my mind, and the closer it got to, to, to today... The, the worst, the, 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 I'm telling you, it's just been horrendous, absolutely horrendous. But I tell you what, it's amazing what they can do. It truly is. And I know there's a lot of people, especially with what's going on in the world right now, love to take time to, to bash on our health professionals. But I want to thank the surgeon and everyone involved up at Aberdeen Royal Infirmary for um, helping my mum through this. And wow. Like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. But wait till I see that brother of mine. I hope he's laughing right now. Because he knew as soon as he had phoned, he thought, mm, maybe not a good thing. Maybe maybe that won't go across too well. I didn't even know whether to answer it or not. So, so far, so good. And I'm just keeping everyone up to date with what's going on there. And um, because we have been talking about it over in Discord. I know a few people have been really concerned. Want to give a shout out to the Gherkins, Karen and Andy, and Zach the dog. Um, they messaged me earlier on today. A lovely little message brought here to my eye, but hey, that's the kind of guy I am. So I want to thank everyone out there for what has been a really, really difficult time. We're all going through difficult times right now. I get that. I'm not making this all about me. And for anyone else out there who is anxious over anything, my heart goes out to you. It truly, truly does. 45 years old and um, when I was growing up lost my granny really young so my mum she was left without her mum pretty young and that's always been there how lucky I am that at the age of 45 I've still got her here with me and for anyone out there who has lost their mum that they know they know exactly what that feels like and it's something I've dreaded it's something we all dread I must admit, I've been kind of piling it on myself. I've been worrying myself sick. But like I say, a big thank you to everyone up there in Aberdeen Royal Infirmary. And quite weird, because I think she's on one of the wards that... You might not know this, but before I joined the army, I wanted to join the army as a nurse. I know it's crazy, right? Join the army as a nurse. However, that meant going to college in Aberdeen. And one of my placements, one of my placements just happened to be on the ward that my mum was on up until today. A weird synchronicity wrapped into all the weirdness going on around me right now. 
But hey, I shouldn't be surprised, right? Because that's how we operate around here. We look for the synchronicities. We look for the connections. We sometimes find puzzles that aren't even there. And I tell you, I've been worrying myself sick, probably unnecessarily for a number of days now. But I want to thank everyone out there. I want to thank everyone out there who's been sending messages, who's been praying for my mum. Big thank you to Ron over in Disco today. Um, he sent me some messages along those lines. Really helped. And um, thank you all. So hopefully when my mum gets a bit better, I'm hopefully going to get her to call into the Kev Baker show. Because I know that she wants to thank all of you as well. She's been extremely moved by the support that has been poured out for her. Um, we've had Bill Bean at our side as well, which has definitely helped. And um, yeah, just thank you to everyone. And today on the main show, today on the main show, Jimmy's going to be coming on. And Jimmy had sent me through some information about what we were going to talk about. But with my head where it is today, I think what we're going to do on the Kev Baker show is we're going to open up the phone lines. And me and Jimmy are just going to sit and chill and chat. Nothing planned, nothing scripted. Just two guys talking, hopefully having a bit of a laugh along the way. But we want to hear from you. So if you want to call into the show when it's on, get a pen, get a bit of paper. The number you will need, and I'll give it out towards the end as well, if somebody wants to remind me, is 213-233-3998. That's 213-233-3998. Now, the phones aren't open right now. I'm not on TFR Live, so we don't have the phones. Don't be phoning in just yet, or you're not going to get to speak to Kev Baker. Not that you want to speak to me anyway. Probably Jimmy you'll want to speak to tonight, right? But listen, um, I'm looking forward to that. And of course, that will be on Truth Frequency Radio. And where we simulcast now over on Odyssey. 150 views we've had on yesterday's show. And for somebody that's just starting out on a brand new, well, not a brand new platform, but it is for KBS. I think that's pretty damn good going. So I want to thank all of you that did check it out over on Odyssey. But with that said, I've got some really interesting stuff for us to get into today. You know, I was trying to look for something to take my mind off what's been going on today. I tried to chill out to Doc McCairn. You all know the Doc, one of my favourite streamers. I just couldn't get in it, into it today. Just head all over the place. And Anne came home and... Uh, she was like, you're going to stream? And I, uh, I think to myself, that the streaming's the last thing on my mind right now. Nothing's going to take my mind off this. But then I thought about it and I thought, you know what? Maybe a stream will take my mind off it. And then Kenny phoned, so we're all good to go. But I found a really weird one that we can take a look at today. It's one I've not heard of before. And it's one of the most mysterious cases of demonic possession I think I've ever come across. And we're going back to 1770. Eight for this, ladies and gentlemen. And it's the strange case, or the mysterious case, of George Lukens. So um, we're going to be getting into that today. And um, hopefully, hopefully this will infotain you for the next hour or so. And then we'll jump on over. You can join us in Discord. Love to see you over at the TFR chat room or in the Odyssey chat room. Either way, however you listen all good with me folks so with that said i can almost breathe a big sigh of relief now almost i'm a warrior you know i laugh at my mum half the time because she gets anxious over anything and i usually i'm the one trying to take the anxiety away from her telling her it's not that bad when you look at it this way or you think about it that way and now here i am here i am the apple obviously didn't fall far from the tree right dang dude a life of anxiety uh, Polly says, why are there no angelic possessions? Well, I would argue there is. I would argue there is, but they're just not as well publicised. And if you think of what people like Bill Bean do, is that not angelic possession? If he comes along and with warrior angels and lifts worry away from people, takes them out of turmoil, I think there's plenty examples of that. But I like to deal in the woo, the darkness. I know, I know. What can I say? So today we're looking at the seven devils of George Lukens, and he was possessed for, get this, 18 years. Yes, indeed. 
So if we come over here, we'll get into it. And if I just blow it up a bit. So he's 18 years possessed. The Seven Devils of George Lukens. Anyone heard of this case before? Before we get into it. Give me a one in the chat room if you've heard of this case before. Um, give, me a, give me a shout out. Polly, I'm sure if you want to go and look for angelic possession on the internet, you'll probably find it, dude. Me, I, I prefer to get into the, the darker, more booga booga side of things. It sells better, right? I am so morbid, Christopher. I am. It's, um, what can I say? There's a morbid streak in me. Isn't there a morbid streak in us all? Now, good news from Bernays. Just got a call that my son came out of surgery. Went well. We see in that also. Bernays, that is absolutely brilliant. Honestly, dude. Um, I, I know what you've probably been going through there. I know what you've been going through there probably, my man. And I hope it's all going to go well. Drop me a line on Disco if you want to talk about it or whatever. Um, always here. Always here, brother. So, number two from Malaya. She hasn't heard of this one. Either a die, Malaya. Um, never heard of this one. Never asked the question till now. You see, there you go, Polly. There, there's a research. There's a line of research for you, dude. You can go out there and find those angelic possessions. I prefer to see luck. Good fortune, positive things happening as perhaps instances of good entities out there looking out for us. So we've got Pauline that too as well. Thin Hope hasn't heard of this one. Good, good, because I'd hate to be sitting here going over this when everyone's like, well, I've heard this case umpteen times, Kev. Now, I know there is a video on YouTube about it, and um, we're not going to play that today. Now, I haven't even looked at it myself. But there is an actual video out there on YouTube. You'll see it linked in this article. I'll probably post the link in the chat room to you. Maybe something you want to check into further. But we'll take a look at it. We'll discuss it. And then I'll hang out with the chat room for a while. How does that sound? Sound good? Sounds like a, a, a damn good plan to me for the day I've had, I'm telling you. So it says the concept of existence of paranormal activity is an intriguing thought for many people. So many unnatural incidents been reported which are directly associated with demonic possession, it is important to uncover the truth. One such case of demonic possession marked in the annals of history as a particularly confusing episode is the demonic possession of George Lukens. As a matter of fact, the case of George Lukens was well known at the time, garnering infamous popularity in England in 1778. Let us dive deeper into the mysterious case of George Lukens to find out what exactly transpired in one of the strangest cases of demonic possession on record. And when we're going back to the 1700s, we have to take into account that people may have viewed such things as mental health issues as perhaps demonic possession. It still happens today, the two kind of, um, the lines are kind of blurred. I know this is something that Bill is always, always aware of anytime he speaks with somebody new. And we spoke about this on and off there, that not everyone who thinks they're suffering from some kind of poltergeist or haunting or demonic ooga boogas Yes, absolutely, they're real, but that doesn't mean that every person who comes along with a story like that is dealing with those forces. Some people, unfortunately, we've got a number of mental issues that can lead to similar type symptoms. And I would imagine some people have been misdiagnosed as having mental health problems when they've been experiencing poltergeist activity. And I think that probably works the other way as well. When people are dealing with poltergeist activity, maybe it's pr it might be coming from the mind itself. So it's going to be interesting to see how in the 1700s they approached what sounds like on the face of it a very, very interesting case of something going on. I provide, you decide by the end of it, because that's how we roll around here, right? And yes, Jocelyn, it's great news for Bernays. Absolutely. Big shout out to Bernays. Um, I hope your son's doing well, bro. So it says where it all started. 
Reverend Joseph Easterbrook was on, or Easterbrook, sorry, I stand corrected, was an Anglican vicar at the Temple Church in Bristol, England, when he came across one of the most controversial cases in his clerical career. On May 31st, 1778, a member of his parish came to him with quite an unnatural request. Sarah Baber, or Baber, depending if you're a tomatoes or tomatoes type of guy, had recently paid a visit to the nearby town of Yatton in Somerset and witnessed a man inflicted with an unexplained condition. There's Temple Church there, lovely looking building. You can just tell the age of it, right? Uh, it looks as if it's in ruins down here at this end. It says she stated that the man was a tailor in his 40s and went by the name of George Lukens. Not George Lucas, George Lukens. That'd be a bit weird if it was George Lucas, right? Maybe he is a couple of hundred years old, I don't know. So according to her account, Lukens, it could be Luke Skywalker, huh? but see, now I digress. Lukens experienced daily fits which were characterised by certain events. One of the foremost features of his fits was that he sang and screamed loudly in different sounds. So some of the sounds he made during the state, did, state of trace did not resemble any type of modulation of the human voice. Apparently, George Lukens also hurled expletives and the vilest of abuses in an aggressive manner. Most important of all, Lukens also said that doctors could not help him when he was in this state of trance. Sarah Baber had been living in Yatton many years before the incident and had formed a different impression of George Lukens. She affirmed that Lukens was a religious man who went to church regularly and was perceived as a good man in society. However, of all this goodness in George Lukens, was apparently put to the test when the fits started almost 18 years ago. Quite a long time under demonic possession, isn't it? The thought that a demonic possession can send shivers down the spine, and here was a man apparently suffering from the evil spirits in his body for almost two decades. Was it spirits or was it something else? Let's go on. The Slap of Doom. Wow. There are many conflicting accounts regarding the reasons for the demonic possession of George Lukens. His family had taken him to several doctors, only to meet with disappointment when they could not figure out the reason behind his erratic behaviour, despite their best efforts. It was even recommended that Lukens be observed over an 18-month-long stay at St George's Hospital in London. However, the fits didn't go away, and gossip in his local community soon branded him as cursed, bewitched, or possessed by a demon. Just like everyone else, George Lukens himself was completely dumbfounded about the reason for his fits. According to the testimony of Lukens, the possession started when he was performing a part in a mummer's play one Christmas. At that time, a young George Lukens was making his way through the streets when he experienced someone slapping him so hard that he fell unconscious on the road. So was this caused by this slap of doom, as they call it? Now there's the actual video there. I'll post that in the chat room. I hope none of you rush off just now to watch it. So it says the slap also... Um, the slap, as many also referred to as the divine slap, has also been attributed to him consuming alcohol at the time, according to people who knew him. Shortly after the incident of the slap, Lucan started showing abnormal behaviour such as seizures and strange barking sounds. So the guy was literally sounding like a, a dogman, werewolf type thing, right? The most distinctive highlight of Lucan's behaviour was the unexplainable and vigorous twitching of his right hand. Uh, is this something brain related right enough then? Are we looking at some kind of epilepsy perhaps? I don't know. 
it's just what I'm thinking as I'm reading this. It wasn't long before George Lucan started to share the belief of the local community that he was cursed. George Lucan's, Lucan's himself went on to claim that as many as seven demons had possessed him. Lucan's had also claimed that seven clergymen would be required for removing the seven demons. Based on all events, all these events, Sarah Baber approached Reverend Easterbrook, who immediately made arrangements for bringing George to Bristol. So the exorcism. Reverend Eastbrook examined George Lucans directly on his arrival at Bristol. Easterbrook, along with colleagues who had gathered to examine Lucans, were surprised at the things they saw. The sounds and the expressions exhibited by Lucans, along with the unexplainable convulsions and aggression, led Reverend Easterbrook and some of his colleagues to believe that it was a real case of demonic possession. However, other colleagues of Reverend Easterbrook were more sceptical about George being possessed by some demonic entity. So Reverend Easterbrook sought the assistance of Methodist ministers in the area to pray for Lucans and help him perform an exorcism, such as Reverend John Vaulton and Reverend John Wesley. Reverend Easterbrook also published an account of the exorcism in the Bristol Gazette, a local newspaper, in an attempt to silence all rumours about the event. The account stated that George Lucans claimed he was the devil and exhibited violent tantrums while singing an inverted version of Te Deum. I've got no idea what Te Deum is, whether it's backwards or whether it's forwards or inverted. And here we have a, a picture, um, obviously from the time. You see the demonic entities here, one looking very reptilian, like one looking a bit like Shrek. I don't know. And then another one looking like Godzilla here. I'm only trying to lighten the load because I tell you what, must have been pretty worrying if you were uh, George Lucans. That's all I can say. So it says Methodist exorcisms resembled Catholic exorcisms in many ways, with rituals including commands and adjurations for the demon to leave. Prayers and hymns had to accompany the commands, and the process concluded with the casting out of demons by using the Trinitarian formula, and that is the spoken phrase, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And that there, how often do we deal with tales of hauntings, demonic possessions, poltergeists, where even people who are non-believers, maybe never even picked up a Bible in their life, and yet they swear that when they've invoked the name of Jesus Christ, or the Trinitarium there as it calls it, that it's had an effect. It's pretty weird. I think it's... it's quite conclusive that there's something going on somewhere. Maybe something that we can't quite fully explain. But remember what we were talking about yesterday, where there is this spiritual component, be it if you want to think of it as interdimensional, if you're not coming at it from the Christian kind of point of view, there is something out there that is so connected with the physical world the two go hand in hand. And at times, that physical world and the spiritual world, the interdimensional place these things reside, the two cross over and it causes major, major issues, right? Major issues. So George Lucan's after the exorcism. After the clergyman commanded the demon to leave George's body and return to hell, he appeared to return to normalcy. Now, the accounts of Reverend Easterbrook state that he ex exclaimed praise for Lord Jesus and recited, recited the Lord's Prayer. He further expressed his gratitude to the clergymen for their efforts. Now, what's more interesting about the case is that this recounting offered by Reverend Easterbrook appears to be of a successful exorcism. He stated that people in his modern era would find it hard to believe 
that the exorcism of George Lukens was indeed true. It says because of the apparent success, he asserted that scriptures also bear the weight of authentic history in ancient as well as modern times. How much of that is true and how much of Easterbrook's testimony can be believed is a matter of personal judgment. 18 years possessed. What do you think, folks? We're going to come back on the other side after I play some music, get a little break, and I'm going to be finding out from all of you out there what other strange cases of hauntings and possessions, all that kind of stuff that you've looked into in the past. I think I may have seen somebody mentioning um, Malachi. Was it Malachi Martin in the chat room? I could be wrong. I was just having a quick glance across. I will be back in a moment, folks. Don't go anywhere. ZX, also the possibility of Zergot poisoning. I shouted. Oh, there we go. So now Malaya, obviously, obviously, I don't think they were painting Shrek back then. But, but it was a coping mechanism of mine and a little bit of my crappy humour to say that that looked a little bit like Shrek. We'll go back. Let's have a look. Does it look like Shrek? Let's see. Why don't we pull this picture up? We'll make it bigger. Uh, probably not quite Shrek right now. Let's see. Here he is. Uh, well, Shrek-ish, the second one. That first one definitely looks like something out of V with, when they, like, pull off the skin suit, right? And that one on the end, it's got a wing on it, so it kind of takes away the Godzilla feel about it. But, um, yeah, 18 years possessed. Was it really possession? And i seen somebody, I think it was Christopher, um, had said that epilepsy was an affliction, uh, epilepsy is a biblical affliction. Now, could that possibly stem from the fact that at the time when the Bible and things was written, and let's not forget it's been rewritten and edited and books taken out and books approved, is that a lack of medical understanding of how the brain worked? I would imagine back in those times it would have been viewed upon in a time where the church was um, far more prominent than science. I would imagine a lot of things were put down to demonic possession. However, over the years, 
maybe as our knowledge has increased on things like the human brain. I don't know. Is there still people that think things like that are a kind of sign of, of something otherworldly? I'm not sure. That's why I ask the question. Um, let's see what people are saying in here. I'm glad you laughed, Malaya. I'm glad you laughed. We all need a good laugh from time to time. And with everything going on in the world right now, oof, laughing is definitely a good medicine. Let me tell you. It's what gets me through most days. I have to laugh at something or else I'd end up crying, probably. Now, the world's not that bad, folks. The world's not that bad. What else are people saying in here? So, it says, humans become possessed the first moment their mum sets them in front of a TV set. Now, I just want to remind King that you're looking into a screen right now. You're scrying into a dark mirror, my friend, whether it's on a phone or a monitor. And are we all, this is a question, are we all opening up to entities that may be able to traverse worlds via electromagnetic waves? Who knows? Who knows, man? I would like to think, though, I would like to think that we're not all marked and going to hell the minute that we're sat in front of a TV set. I would like to think that, but I don't know. I'm just a guy in Glasgow who's got the telly on behind me and probably, probably worried there's demonic entities coming through it. Too late for me as well, King. Too late for me as well, brother. I'm telling you, man, I have too many, too, too many skeletons in my closet from when I was a young idiot. I don't think there's anything I could do to kind of outweigh that when I, when I meet, meet the maker, you know. I think the list of sins and stuff I've got up to it will be a very long scroll indeed and uh, probably be able to read the good things I've done on one hand so um, I think I'm pretty much I think I know where I'm going let me tell you it is what it is folks it is what it is eh? we're all going to end up going somewhere level 2 that's what I hope to see when I leave the space suit congratulations you made it through physical playground at number 1 now on to the real game. Shh, imagine this is just training for somewhere else we go. Pretty weird, right? Or, or, is heaven and hell, are they man-made constructions? A bit horrible to think that we're here for a blink of an eye and then once we evacuate the spacesuit, once it's not running anymore, a harsh thought to think that's the end, right? I'm just saying. Just throwing it out there will probably cause much controversy. Just throwing that thought out there. I heard Alan Watts saying that one time. And it was quite profound. It did make me think. And it's the one thing that nobody truly knows. I know we have people who talk about near-death experiences. But that's a near-death experience. Now, short of getting a good communication via a Ouija board, which I wouldn't recommend to anyone. Do we really know? Do we really know where we go? Well, that's where faith comes in, folks. That's where faith comes in, if you're that way inclined. And I do have faith that there is something bigger and better that awaits us. Not all of us, maybe, but I'd like to think all of us here. Not harsh, Kev, just silly. Hey, I'm the silliest guy I know, so that's okay. Karen says, I haven't got enough keys to unlock the padlocks I've put on the pearly gates over my life. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Um, now, Malaya says of that painting, and we'll go back to the painting here, says, looks like some type of wraith, possibly a dogman type. Makes sense. 1780 to 1818 was filled with art like this, even upside down paranormal arts. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Faith, not religion. Yes. Uh, religion comes with too many sets of rules. And uh, I don't know, I'm more a man of faith. Funny the religious folk who coined the term epilepsy, spiritual condition, now are totally scientific. Are those folks still around? 
psychological condition. The brain is a pretty enigmatic thing. Um, even speaking with Doc McCairn, who literally knows how the, the kind of the brain works, there's so much that we don't know about the brain that um, I don't know. Will we ever crack truly? Will we ever have a full understanding of how the brain, how the mind, how consciousness really works? Interesting, right? Faith is like a placebo effect. Well, the placebo effect is very, very real. People have faith. I don't knock it. Each to their own, I say. Each to their own. What else is happening in here? Let me see what else is doing the rounds on our usual websites today. Ah, it's great just to be able to relax and not worry about things I've been worrying about all day long. Let me see what I can find for us to get into here. The brain is an undiscovered universe. Wow. I like that, Karen. I like that. Um, ZX was having a word with me earlier on today. And it's something that I've had a word with Karen about before. Karen sent me through a story, a personal story, a woo story. And at the time, I had mentioned that I would really like to get into doing that kind of content be it either reading short stories or what I would prefer is your stories. And they can be real, they can be fictional, as long as you just kind of state what they are. And then that way we could make videos out of it. A bit wary about going to sites like Creepypasta because they've got copyright warnings on all of their stuff. And of course there's a Creepypasta channel already on YouTube. But I do think it would be great to get into kind of uploading 10 to 15 minute videos. Keep it on the woo. We could upload them over on the big channel. I'll keep the channel ticking over. And then again, it's stuff that I'm interested in. And I know it's stuff, the woo is stuff that a lot of you like to get into as well. Because it kind of takes our mind away from some of the more serious stuff going on in the world right now. Not that we're ignoring it. Just that we like to sometimes unplug from it. Because if you're plugged into that side of the information stream 24-7, I tell you what, you really are. You really are running the risk of ending up doing your mind a whole lot of damage. A whole lot of damage. It's no good consuming all of that 24-7. That's why I like to give people somewhere to come where they can get away from that. But we know. We all know. We're all well aware of what's going on in the world at the same time the real things that we're all facing, whatever country we're in right now. But the woo, the woo is, the woo is where I want to be. That's why prayers work. Definitely think. Now, um, let's see. Christopher says, the stuff they talked about is catalogued for us to look at. It's all good. PFI pending further investigation. Just making observations. We like observations. The woo is a science, my friend, absolutely. I am a semi-qualified pseudo-wooologist. Almost called myself a woodologist there. That would have been really creepy, right? Kev is an expert in wood. Not good, <laughs> not good. Don't say that too loud. Christopher, I love that you tune in here. I wish some days I had a lot more interesting content I could bring you. But that's why I urge everyone not only to check out what we do on here, but check out the main Kev Baker show as well over on TFR Monday to Thursday. And then, of course, we've got our highlight of the week. Certainly the highlight of the week for me is Freaky Friday when we get to hear Scotty and Nacy. And I can add in my little bit of woo. And together, it comes just together oh, like, a, like, a, like a witch's brew, a paranormal woo. That's what I like about it. So what else is the chat room saying? The irony of my life, brother, says Christopher. Yes, indeed. What is Thin Hope saying? I see pollination agreeing. That's why prayers work. Yeah. It's, um, I think there's a lot. I think there's a lot more going on than meets the eye when it comes to what we ourselves are able to do when we focus intention. And what is prayers if it's not focused intention? 
you know, you can look at studies that have been down or done around the world as well when it comes to things like meditation and stuff like that. And there seems to be a measurable effect when like-minded individuals all focus on the one thing. There's that thing, The Secret. Remember that? The, the, the a book and a video that goes along with it, The Power of Intent. You've got to be really careful when you start playing about with that stuff because sometimes you get more than you bargained for. And there's that story that Donnie tells us where, you know, he, he went wishing for rain, done a thing to get the rain going, only it went too far and it rained that much. There was a flash flood where he lived. You see, you got to be really careful what you wish for. And that's why I think Dr. Richard Allen Miller was on to something when he said that men have to take responsibility for the thoughts that they have. Because our thoughts, our thoughts have the ability to manifest. And that's why if you look at the world uh, or look at some of the darkest stuff in the world and that's all you look at, it ends up your world around you starts to look very dark, right? And on the flip side of that, you look at lots of positive stuff. You keep yourself in a positive mind and hallelujah. Look at that. Positivity. Optimistic stuff. Good things are happening all around us. It's weird how the world works. Truly really weird. So, yes, Kev, ever seen The Bleak Do We Know? Highly recommended. Dude, I think I watched that about 10 years ago. That's what kind of ignited my uh, quantum quantum interest and anyone who hasn't seen what the bleep do we know where have you been hiding where have you been hiding in fact i think we might do that then we might just do that over on odyssey maybe on saturday this week we'll we'll sit and watch that i think that'd be quite good to geek out to that gets into the whole double split or the double slit experiment um yeah i like that one man oh karen let me dig it up for you what a bloody movie that is. Well, documentary, movie. Um, I'm pretty sure I watched that. This will give away how long ago it was, right? I think I watched that on Google Video. That, that, it's been around a while, but you know what? It's timeless. It's timeless. What the bleep do we know? <clears throat> They've got the full movie on there. They're actually wanting you to pay for it now. Can you believe that? Um, here's the trailer for it. We'll watch the trailer, right? It's very mysterious. It's very mysterious. It's a question that we don't have a good answer, a good answer to. Well, that is the ultimate okay. question. question. Now, that is tricky. That is tricky. The more you look at quantum physics, the more mysterious and wondrous it becomes. The question is, how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go? No, oh, yes, indeed. How far down the rabbit hole do you want to go? And I tell you, um, it's still around. It's still around, Karen. Um, yeah, it pushed my limits as well. If you can hold off till Saturday, Karen, we could watch that over on Odyssey or maybe just over in the disco server. We can just shove it on in there and we can geek out to what the bleep do we know. All of this really is just a great illusion. Great illusion. Are people affecting the world of reality that they see? You betcha they are. What is reality? What is reality? Have you ever thought about what thoughts are made of? It is so mysterious you can't explain it. The real trick to life is not to be in the know, but be in the mystery. Ponder that for a while. I'll tell you right now, and I think Polly would agree with me here, that promo, 2004 that came out. Dear Lord, I've been doing this too long. Um, oh, wow. Um, 2004 that came out, but I tell you what, that trailer i don't think done it justice i really don't um okay here's an r clip we'll try this one here subway exhibit 
So this is uh, what the bleep do we know water scene. And we're going to get into the science of Dr. Inamoto. Oh, oh mind blow. They're made up of how much water? Let's just uh, check. How much water in the human body? 60% water. And if we look at the work of Dr. Emoto, if we go back to this scene here, I think it was thank you he had put on this test tube and then flash frozen the water. And that's what the ice crystals looked like. As opposed to when you put in bad intentions and it's all jagged, it's not symmetrical, it just looks a jumble, it's a mess, it's kind of out of, it looks, well, look, there you go. It doesn't look anything like the, the kind of patterns that we get there, right? So the reason I bring that up is if we're always being very negative and we're always glass half full instead of, um, or sorry, glass half empty instead of half full, you have to wonder what effect that's having on, on the cells, even in your own body. You know, like today when I've been worrying about things all day long, what, what kind of physiological effects has that been having on the internal structures of my water. And I think this is a big reason why there seems to be, seems to be this constant fear vibe out there. If you can keep people in that fear vibe, as opposed to the love and light, it sounds all new agey, but instead of being positive and optimistic and things, I think that's doing us a lot more damage than we can even measure. Probably uh, would be quite mind-boggling to, to kind of find that stuff out. But what the bleep do we know, Polly Nation? Holy heck. And this is the mistake I make all the time. I assume, and nobody should ever assume anything, because when you break that word up, what does it say? An ass, you, and me. Right? I just assume that when I speak to everyone on here, or everyone on the show, that people must have been doing this as long as I've been doing it. And they must have seen all the stuff that I've seen previously, but like Polly reminded us there, that's not the case. So I really want to thank Polly for bringing that one back into my consciousness. And then I think... Oh, wow. Ron. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. No Australian voice today. There was no message with it. It's a sticker. Thanks for being you. Uh, Ron, I don't know if you were here when I mentioned it earlier, but thank you for being you earlier on today over on Disco. Um, we often exchange private messages on there. And uh, Ron is somebody who I have a lot of time for and I learn, learn a lot from. I think we need to get Ron on a show sometime soon. Um, I would like that. I think that would be a good move. I don't know why I haven't asked until now, but I think maybe one day real soon, if Ron is able to, and if Ron is up for it, I think we should just come on, chill out, either on here or on a TFR show, and just let Ron speak to you about his experience in the world, the stuff that he knows about. And if you're like me, and you listen, and you take it on board, there's a lot to be learned from a man like Ron. Thank you, brother. Um, Christopher says, uh, Marty, Marty, I just accepted your friend request over on Facebook, but I have to admit, and I'm sure you probably already appreciate this, I don't spend too much time on there, but there's like people that I do stay in touch with via Facebook, and you would obviously be one of them, and I'll actually add you in to one of our KBS groups. It's a group messenger thing we've got where I usually drop the link when we're going live. We've got the Gherkins in there, my mum's in there, Spooky Andy, Donnie, a whole load of other people as well. And of course, Marty, if anytime anyone goes live or anything that you think people would enjoy it, you can drop that into that chat room as well. So thank you. Marty, um, at the start of the stream, I had been just contacted by my brother 
And sorry if this is repetitive for anyone that was tuned in early. But good news, my mum's out of the operation. I'm going to get Anne to phone the hospital in a, in a couple of moments to find out what's going on. But after the initial shock of my brother calling me, it, this is terrible. Me and my brother hardly ever talk on the phone. And that's something I want to correct. Something I really need to correct. Um, but when I seen the phone going, oh, that was the last thing I needed to see today. But he was just telling me, just telling me that she has come out the other side. And so far, so good. Fingers crossed, all went well. Yeah, I hate the Facebook as well, Marty. Although, although that being said, I've met so many wonderful people through Facebook that it's hard to kind of um, entirely dismiss it as something bad and evil. I just use it for my own good and for the good of the KBSers that hang about over there. Um, I rarely even post links to the shows on there anymore. Because I'm aware that unless the algorithm wants to show you the link to the show, it ain't going to show you. So I used to spend so many hours a day preparing promos and putting them out. And then after a while, I realized, well, not everyone has seen this. And of course, Facebook, they would come and say, but Kev, if you want to spend this X amount of money, we'll make sure it gets to all your contacts. Well, wasn't that the point in people being contacts in the first place? You see? Crazy. Marty, it's all appreciated, and hopefully um, when my mum's back home and she's um, feeling far better, I'm going to hopefully get her onto the show, even for 10 minutes, just to thank everyone, because I know she's been blown away by the support of everyone around here, okay? So, um, big thank you. You honour me too much, brother. Some people just do life with a gusto. Much thanks, love the chat, lurking and working. And that's, see, that's the kind of guy that Ron is. It's just, Ron's Ron. Um, I truly appreciate somebody like a Ron. Keeps me right a lot of the time. But there you go. If that does that speaks volumes about the guy. That does that not back up what I just said about Ron? So yeah. What else is happening in the chat room? Polly, what other what other ones can you remember, man? What other ones can you remember? Um Damn, what the bleep do we know? Let's see if there's any other clips we can play out of it. Just as a little teaser. A little warm up. Okay, um let's see. There are some clips here. Let's try this one. It's an our trailer. Is this boring? Yeah, it's looking like it could be. Not the one we're after. Definitely not the one we're after. Um, no, that's not what I, I tried to click on. It was that one there. 52 seconds. If we had a greater appreciation for the fact that we're all one, maybe we would start to, to think better and act, act more responsibly. Um, in the knowledge that we are all connected in some way. We talk about the Bush Telegraph on here and how some people can pick up remotely on what other people are feeling. I've used the example of Nano Girl and me often enough, probably ad nauseum for some of you out there. But that tells me that there's something very interconnected about everything. Everything. If only we have the ability to tune into it, and some people do, not everybody can, but that doesn't mean that those people aren't connected. It's just that some people are more acutely aware of it and can actually manipulate it, use those connections, those fibers, those strands of whatever it is that connect us all together. When I say we're all connected together, I'm talking about everything, everything in the universe. Pretty deep. Um, you know, Karen, you mentioned the water clip, and it is, it's absolutely magnificent. And I don't know if people remember Aaron Dykes and Melissa Melton. They're Aaron and Melissa Dykes now. They used to be on InfoWars, but they've done a whole load of their own movies, Truth Stream Media, and they actually done their own type of Emoto experiment, and they used grains of rice. 
And I can't remember how they done it, but they had similar. They discovered they discovered it was like repeatable science. They had stuck um, stickers on uh, intentions on things. I'd need to speak to them again to to find out like the exact details of it. But this isn't just a one-off with one scientist somewhere. This is repeatable stuff, you know. We're all connected, but also we are sovereign wave and a particle free will situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more, um, Christopher. The double slit experiment, that blew my mind, and that's in hope. The double slit experiment is what really, really sent me down the quantum rabbit hole. Um, I'm still, still to this day. You can sometimes find me on, on a day where there's not much happening, where I'll look for presentations on quantum biology, quantum this, quantum that. Now, a lot of it, I'll tell you right now, goes straight over the top of my head. But um, there's a lot of people in quantum science that would tell you, anyone who says they understand the quantum world, hasn't truly appreciated what it is because it's so so far removed from what we 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 commonly deal with in physical reality you know it was einstein spooky action at a distance right even he kind of struggled to wrap his head around it earlier on in his life but thank towards the end he had a deeper appreciation for the fact that there's a lot of unseen stuff going on now Thank you. That is... That's a recurring membership. So a big thank you to Anna. We have not got another member in months. We haven't had a new member. And that's not on you people out there. That's on me not doing my job right. That's what that is. So I need to work harder to get more members on board. And then when we got more members on board, that goes back into the channel. And the next thing we're going to be getting is a restream package so that we can go out to multiple video sharing platforms all at the same time and uh, spread our wings and spread our digital footprint across the internet. Yes, indeed. Um, ZX says superposition is deluded. You think so? You're not, you're not buying into that one. Not buying into that one, ZX. And look. That's all good in the hood here. That's one thing that we don't do around here is end up falling out or or because there's a difference of opinion. That, oh, well, you're not agreeing with Kev. We don't roll like that here. We're a, we're, we're a very, very good mix of individual minds. And that's what makes my experience on the channel a whole lot more rewarding. And I learn a lot. I learn a lot from you out there, and I'm sure I'd like to think that I point you in a direction that makes you learn some stuff as well. It's like I say, I provide, you decide, and on a good day, I can't even rival a broken clock. Trust me, if I get two things right in a day, that's a good day for Kev. It's a really good day for me. Anyone who thinks they understand quantum physics is deluded. Ah, yes, my friend, there you go. Absolutely. Um, look at the Borg is one, but we ain't the Borg. Absolutely. I wonder, you know, if the Borg is almost an artificial... Um, if we were to artificially build that, that hive mind. It seems to be a thing they always talk about, right? The hive mind, things like that. I think we already have the hive mind. I think we are already interconnected. It's far more subtle and... Uh, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that one myself. Stop reading my mind, Kev. Hey, Christopher, what can I say, man? And we've got a delay going on here, dude. So maybe I'm not reading your mind. How can a person join as a member? Okay. Mercedes, that's great to see you. And um, thank you for putting the one of the early reviews for Bill's new book, Purge. Enjoyed adding that into the... What would you call it? Promo for the new book? 
I was just about to release the promo when Bill said, hold on, hold on, Mercedes has given it an early read as well. So I think um, your review of that is over on Bill's channel as well, Mercedes. But for anyone who does want to become a member, if you go over to the channel, and it should be below the video right now, might not be if you're on a mobile, but if you go over to the channel, and I'll take you over here, but you should see a join button on there. And it starts at 1.99, goes all the way up to 17.99. But what I've done is everybody gets access to anything we do for the members. I know there's people out there that want to support um, the channel, but may not have the financial means to do so, and that's fine. That's why some Sundays now we maybe only do an hour with the members only, and then we open it up to the bigger audience. And then there's some people who are in a position and do want to help out more, and that's why we've got a staggered tier system. It's not me trying to extort money out of anyone. It all goes into paying for the internet bills, and that's what keeps us coming back here every day. And it takes a, a big weight off Anne, because Anne's the breadwinner in this house as much as it hurts my testicles to admit it. And uh, anything I can do to take the pressure off Anne's shoulders is definitely a good thing. And hopefully, hopefully, touch wood, but um, hopefully I'll be having some money coming in soon um, in the background, which will take some of the pressure away from, you know, having to ask for donos, having to ask for memberships. I would love to be able to do this and not have a care in the world when it comes to money. If I had millions in the bank, oh, the algorithm would be the last of my worries. We would just do this on here and not worry about partnerships. But unfortunately, unfortunately, positions where I'm in just now rely on that partnership with Google. And it's a good, listen, I enjoy it. I know I can't talk about everything we want to talk about, but I'm very lucky in that I have got Truth Frequency Radio and a platform there where we can talk about those things. And I've got an audience, and I'm talking to you lot out there right now, that appreciate that we've had to very much change the focus of what we do here on YouTube, but at the same time, you've appreciated that and stuck with me here and also stuck with the main show where you get into those hot topics where we get into the stuff that, as I call it, is not suitable for YouTube anymore. So you people out there, whether you're a member, whether you're not, everyone here, you mean so much to me personally. I'm stuck in the house day in, day out because of health worries, and I'm not here to look for sympathy. But I don't think I convey as much just how big a help you are to all of me Stay insane in an insane world. And I know a lot of you think the same way about what I do for you out there. But I don't think people appreciate just what you bring to the table in all of this. Because it might only be 39, 40 people here, but I'm happy with that. I know that it's 39 or 40 quality minds. No bots. You're all human. We haven't been infested with the botnets. Oh, Jocelyn, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, indeed, in our very sexy Australian accent. I can't do it because I'm not sexy or Australian. But Donnie, see, Donnie, that's the thing. I suppose if you added up the time that I do this, some people would say, well, that's a job you're doing. But I suppose, again, I'm really lucky then, right? Because what is it they say? If you can get a job doing something you love, then it's not like work. You don't recognize it as being like work, right? And that's kind of where I'm at. Kind of where I'm at with this right now. And uh, hopefully, hopefully over time, circumstances will change. Things will change. And hey, listen, I ain't going anywhere. All right. So stick with me and we'll see where we end up. Who knows what the future holds? Nobody knows, folks. Nobody knows. So um, I can only be as real a, a, as I am. That's one thing. I don't know whether that's actually cursed the channel, um, whether it's stagnated our growth, the fact that I am just here doing this as honestly as I can. Maybe, you know, there's part of me sometimes wonders, should I go down that clickbait type of road? Maybe... um. 
step back from from being so concerned about getting real hard information, but how do I even put this into words? There's a lot of other YouTubers who probably sacrifice a little bit of their integrity just to chase those clicks and views. Do you feel me? If I ain't like that, I've had that, I've done that back in the day before YouTube all changed, got the big views, videos with quarter of a million views, half a million views. If I look at the information that was in those videos and how much of that really came to bear, how much of what the Red Dragon said really came to fruition, how much of what me and Anthony Patch, not the science of CERN and particle accelerators, but how much of the reconnecting to Saturn and opening up portals to hell, how much of that really, really came to fruition, came to pass? But that's what people want. If, they, if you want to get the big views, the big clicks, you've got to be a bit more liberal with the, with the facts, if that's a way of putting it. I don't know. I'd rather do it this way. Yeah, exactly. Apex TP TV. You know, they, they, they found a niche where people just love to watch time travelers. And you end up, you chase those clicks. You need to keep coming up with new time travelers. Despite the fact that none of them are time travelers. And yet people swallow it hook, line, and sinker. Do I want those 200,000 people? Or would I rather 40 real people who don't all agree with me on everything, but we learn from one another. We support one another. And we're here for one another. And you know what? We keep it real. And when I go to bed at night, I might have financial worries and all the other worries that you've got out there. But at least I can sleep easy. At least I know I'm not knowingly duping people. I'm not knowingly worrying people. I'm not selling people a black pill that in many cases doesn't even exist. I'm not here to satisfy anyone's paranoia, to, to massage the... The, the kind of paranoia, the, the, the kind of content that they crave. A lot of people just want to be in that darkness. A lot of people would rather somebody come on here and scare the hell out of them and to hell with the facts. I don't think you people are like that. I think you rather, the real Kev, real news, um, warts and all, right? And with that said, we're after nine o'clock now and I'm absolutely waffling, waffling on. Waffling on. Sometimes our imagination gets the best of us. Absolutely. Absolutely, dude. There's nothing wrong with the imagination. Marty says, not good to sacrifice your integ integrity for clicks and views. It definitely isn't. Definitely isn't. I don't think you folk would hang around too long if you even suspected I was going down that road. In fact, I know you wouldn't. And Anne says, it's okay, she would hit me with a shoe. So uh, she's got you covered, folks. She's got you covered. Big time. Yep. Anne is in control. She wears the big boy pants in the house. Yep. So um, before I go, any other pressing matters from the chat room? Or, or have I just talked through a hole in my bum for the past 10 minutes? I don't know. Did people... Uh, I don't know, folks. What's happening out there? What are you saying in chat land? Let me shove on some music while we're... Uh, Dealing with the chat room. Family, not fame. Polly Nation. On it. As usual, Polly. You usually are, man. And what the bleep do we know? Polly, you have to remind me, man. You have to remind me I was gonna we're gonna watch What the Bleep Do We Know. Need to find that. Need to find that a full copy of that so we can uh, geek out to that over in Disco or over on Odyssey. Imagination is great, but it can also conjure fear. Absolutely. Absolutely, folks. What else are we getting in there? How many shoes has Anne got? Oh, more than she needs, Donnie. More than she needs. I almost broke my neck tripping over her work boot last night. Unbelievable, man. <laughs> Fam not fame, Kev, PPP, much love. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Thank you very much, brother. I'll tell you what. We might have come in here to talk about the the mystery of George Lukens, but damn. 
We've had a pretty good uh, yarn, right? All right, it's been me talking all the time, and that can't be a good thing. I get it. But I've enjoyed this. I really have. I don't know what it would be like to walk, watch back now that it's not live, but probably best to join KBS when we're live, right? Probably. Jocelyn, Marty, ZX, Christopher. Man, Christopher, you've been on. You've been hammering home some good points today, dude. Bang. On fire. Listen, we're going to be opening up the phones on the Kev Baker show today so that you can have your say about anything you like. Um, I'll probably get a load of people phoning up with black pill stuff now, right? Um, but me and Jimmy Jeans will be there. And uh, you can call in. You can say what you like. If you've got a pen and a bit of paper handy, write this down. If not, type it into a notepad on your PC. 213-233-3998. It's 213-233-3998. Really quickly. Um, Jimmy gives me a row for how I read out the phone numbers. He says that you Americans over there, you don't understand what I'm talking about when I say 213-233-3998. And I think it's pretty self-explanatory, even for Americans. Jimmy says it's a no-no. No, double this and double that, it confuses people. So, 213 233-3998. How's that? And on that note, listen, we've got our jamming tunes on on the background. Um, I might make y'all silent, says Polly. Usually do that, dude. You're usually full of questions and it just keeps going into questions and questions. And it's Polly. That's why you're Polly and we love you, dude. KBS crew and Kev, you are the best. Well, I would say exactly the same to you, Karen. And wow, Mercedes. Um, let's see if there's a message with that. Wow. Wow. Um, thank you, Mercedes. I didn't know if there'd be a message with that there. Um, thank you for that PayPal. Really appreciated. Very humbled. Um, wow. Not sure what to say now. Thank you, Mercedes. Thank you to everyone. And a big thank you to everyone for uh, sending love and prayers and vibes to my mum. I've done a lot more than any of us appreciate. Just keep on being you out there, folks. That's all I ask. Keep on being you and make sure I stay true to what we do around here, okay? Not that that'll take much work, because I'm telling you, I ain't changing for anyone. We're going to do it the way we do it, warts and all, okay? I'm out of here. y'all like to um you, you like to chat in the chat room so i'll leave this song on thank you so so much mercedes um you really don't know just how timely that is <sighs> honestly um god works in mysterious ways mercedes he truly does and i think he just worked through you mm -hmm. 